Hello, welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I have a master's degree in nursing education. I'm also a family nurse practitioner. In today's video, I will be going over hydrochlorothiazide. This video is geared more towards nursing students, but if you're here to learn more about hydrochlorothiazide because maybe your provider wants to put you on this medication, then you will certainly learn about it. In this video, I will be discussing the use of uh, hydrochlorothiazide, the drug class, side effects, and nursing implications, and that includes assessment, patient teaching, labs to monitor, etc. All right, before we get started, make sure you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. Let's go. Okay, hydrochlorothiazide, let's get started. Also, the way to abbreviate hydrochlorothiazide, a lot of times you'll see it being right now as HCTZ. So what does hydrochlorothiazide do? How does it work? Hydrochlorothiazide is a thiazide diuretic, right? The name indicates the drug class, right? They're not all that easy, I wish they were. So their drug class is, it's a thiazide diuretic and it's it helps with hypertension and diuresis. The way that it works is that it inhibits sodium and chloride reabsorption in the distal tubule. So your loop diuretics work here, potassium sparing work here, like aldactone is a potassium sparing diuretic, and then your thiazide diuretics work in your distal tubule. And I will put the link to the two books that I used for this resource. I really like the Davis drug book for nurses. I think that it does a great job of highlighting the important things for uh, for you guys. And then I did also use a pharmacology made easy book that was written. I can't remember the actual name, but I will put it in the comment section. It was written by a medical doctor and it's clinical pharmacology, something along the lines of made easy. Uh, what is the action of hydrochlorothiazide or this thiazide diuretic? It promotes excretion of sodium. And the thing is that water follows sodium. So as sodium is leaving the body, so is water. And that's why it's so effective at getting fluid out of people. So it promotes excretion of sodium, chloride, and potassium. And then the therapeutic effects, if there's water leaving, right, it's going to lower blood pressure, increases diuresis, that's why patients will call it the water pill, and it helps with chronic edema. So when people have chronic edema like this, it helps get that excess fluid out. Now, it is contraindicated if someone has a sulfa allergy, sulfonamide, and sulfa is found in thiazides or sulfonamides, and one antibiotic that has sulfa is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole or Bactrim, which is very frequently used for UTIs. So always you want to assess for allergies always. Uh, side effects of thiazide diuretics. They can include hypotension, right? So sometimes too much of a good thing is a bad thing, right? So did we lower their blood pressure too much? So they can get hypotension, hyperglycemia. Thiazide diuretics can raise blood glucose or blood sugar. Hypokalemia is very important. It's very significant and it's important to monitor because hypokalemia can affect the heart rhythm and so many things. It can cause dehydration, hypercalcemia, nausea, and vomiting, all of these. But what I want you to focus on primarily in nursing school is the fact that it can cause hypokalemia. So you want to be monitoring their potassium. Hyponatremia, that's important, but you're normally going to be tested on the hypokalemia. And then as a healthcare provider, if you're thinking about maybe becoming a nurse practitioner in the future, you have a patient that they were recently put on um, a thiazide diuretic and all of a sudden they come in two weeks later and they're having a gout attack and they've never had a history of gout, then it, unfortunately it was the thiazide diuretic that precipitated this gout attack. Instead of you don't know that this is a side effect, you diagnose the patient with gout and then they stay on the thiazide diuretic and then they continue to have exacerbations of gout and all of a sudden you're doing the polypharmacy where this medication caused this side effect and then you're giving another pill for gout and then it's a non-ending cycle. So if someone develops gout because they're on a thiazide diuretic, you may want to consider, um, and you could also, if you're not a nurse practitioner, you can talk to the healthcare provider about an alternative treatment option. And then this, this word, rare, should, this is rare, Steven Johnson syndrome. I don't know why it saves like that. But anyways, so... Um, 
HCTC can also increase cholesterol levels. So hypercholesterolemia and then a rare side effect, this should have been together, RARA is Steven Johnson syndrome. And Steven Johnson syndrome is a life-threatening side effect if you ever see a rash in a patient, you immediately want to stop the medication. So nursing implications assessment. This is what you should be doing. You want to monitor their blood pressure, intake and output, and daily weight. You want to monitor for edema. You want to assess for signs of electrolyte imbalance, which include anorexia, nausea, vomiting, muscle cramps, paresthesia, which is a tingling, confusion. Always notify the healthcare provider if these signs occur. Patients on digoxin are at risk for digitalis toxicity because of the potassium depleting effect of thiazide diuretics. So if they're on uh, a thiazide plus uh, digoxin, be very, very careful. If hypokalemic, you may want to consider obtaining an order for potassium supplementation or their, their dose of diuretic may need to be decreased. Always assess for allergy to sulfonamides or sulfa. You want to assess the patient for skin rash frequently during therapy. You immediately discontinue at first sign of rash because it may be life-threatening and Steven Johnson syndrome may develop. If a patient is taking a thiazide diuretic for hypertension, you want to monitor their blood pressure before and periodically during therapy. Lab test considerations. You want to monitor electrolytes, specifically potassium, blood glucose, BUN, serum creatinine. These are how well are the kidneys functioning, right? Uh, uric acid levels. Uric acid levels is what will be elevated in a gout exacerbation. So is the HCTZ raising uric acid levels before and periodically during therapy? Hydrochlorothiazide may increase serum and urine glucose in diabetic patients. It may decrease their magnesium, potassium, and sodium, and it may increase their cholesterol, LDL, and triglyceride concentration, so all of the bad cholesterol. So if you're watching this as a patient or even as a nurse, I mean, there's plenty of nurses. Uh, I, I, I highly encourage you. Every medication has a side effect, and we have to weigh its pros and its cons, right? But I highly encourage you as a patient, as a nurse, as whoever you are watching this video to First and foremost, try to lower your blood pressure through lifestyle modifications. Start, eat healthier, exercise, limit your sodium intake, because if you don't lower your blood pressure, we will, as healthcare providers, have to give you a pill. And then unfortunately, that pill comes with a slew of side effects, but untreated hypertension also comes with a slew of side effects, including you could have a heart attack, you could have a stroke, you could have kidney damage, right? So a lot of times, and it depends, Every I get different kinds of patients. I get patients that don't want to take a pill no matter what, and I get other patients that just want to take a pill and they don't want to do any kind of lifestyle modifications because it's just easier to take a pill, right? But I do encourage you, if at all possible, try to go the natural route because you see all these side effects that happen as a result of medications. Potential NANDAs, excess fluid volume related to, risk for deficient fluid volume, deficient knowledge related to medication regimen. Now going back to what I was saying previously, if you need a medication, you need it, just take it, right? But if there's anything that you can do to maybe hold off on it, I would go that route. And then implementation. You want to administer, this is a big one in nursing school, we're giving the water pill or the hydrochlorothiazide in the morning. Why? Because you don't want this poor patient getting up five times a night because you gave them a water pill at night and now they're peeing all night long. So give it to them in the morning. Intermittent dose schedule may be used for continued control of edema. Um, if you're giving it orally, you may give with food or milk to minimize GI irritation. Tablets may be crushed and mixed with fluid to facilitate swallowing. Patient family teaching. Instruct patient to take medication same time each day. Take mix, take missed dose as soon as remembered, but not when next dose is due. So for example, let's say that I forgot to take my 10 a.m. pill yesterday and it's now 10 a.m. today. I'm not going to take two pills today because I forgot my 10 a.m. pill. This is not birth control, we're not double dosing. 
Instruct patient to monitor weight two times a week and notify HCP of, of significant changes. Weight gain of more than five pounds per week. Caution patient to change position slowly due to orthostatic hypotension and alcohol may increase orthostatic hypotension or the risk of having orthostatic hypotension. Advise patient to use sunscreen and protective clothing to prevent photosensitivity reactions. So they may be predisposed to be a little bit more sensitive to sun, sunburn. So that's why they need to wear sunscreen, cover up, Advise patient to report rash, muscle weakness, cramps, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or dizziness to HCP. Hypertension. Advise patient to continue to take medication even if feeling better. This is important. Medication controls but does not cure hypertension. If you have it, you got to take these medications because you can't just take it here or there. It's not like Tylenol. It's not like Advil that you just, you have a little ache and pain. You take the pill and then you don't take it again until you have another ache and pain. No, you have to take this on a consistent basis. If women were to take birth control one day, yes, one day, no, that's not how birth control works. You have to take birth control consistently in order to not get pregnant. If you don't want to get rebound hypertension, which means you took a pill today, you did, you don't take it for three days. Next thing you know, your blood pressure shoots up because you're not taking your medication consistently. Encourage patient to comply with additional interventions for hypertension, which include weight reduction, low sodium diet, exercise, smoking cessation, moderation of alcohol, and stress management. Instruct patient and family how to correctly monitor blood pressure. So the evaluation and the desired outcomes is we're not gonna keep patients on a medication that it's not effective. So we need to evaluate its efficacy. Is it reducing blood pressure? And did it reduce blood pressure if that's what it's for? Or did it reduce edema if that's what um, we are giving it to this patient? If yes, great, then it's an effective medication for this patient. Because remember, not everybody reacts or responds to medications in the same manner, and that's why we have to treat each patient as an individual. All right, so that concludes the end of this slide. Again, I will, um, in the comment section, I will include the two books that I used for this PowerPoint slide. If you want a copy of this PowerPoint slide, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and then that you email nursing with Professor B at gmail.com. If you're using this to study for a nursing exam, remember about potassium, that's very important and best of luck to you. All right, until next time. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn on that notification bell. Mm -hmm.